Philip, how you doing, man? Your ears look very clean, dude. I just cleaned them. Did you? What's I your, went to. I, what's I, your I, ear? Wait. What's your ear skin routine? Do you have an uh, ear skin routine? Yeah, yeah. So I start. I start out with uh, is it toner? Uh, salicylic acid cleanser. I yeah. move to a toner. Okay, toner. After that, uh huh. And then yeah. after that, I uh, Aveeno Calm and Restore. Okay. Put that all over. Yeah. Here's, Here's the deal. I, and then uh, 50 SPF. Yeah. I So I kind of went through this routine um, in uh, showering where I would, I would do my face wash. And then since my hands were like right next to my ears, I would start doing my face wash, just washing my ears with the face wash. But it, it, it dried out my ears like crazy. I did it for a couple of days, like a week. And then my ears got very dry. So... How far back do you go? Do you go back here, like behind your ears when you're cleaning your face? Yes, yeah. which is our first sponsor, uh, <laughs> Nimmin's Ear Lotion. Nimmin's. Uh, if you, <laughs> is that a real? <laughs> yeah, if you have dry ears, uh, pick up yourself a bottle of Nimmin's Ear Lotion. Okay. And uh, what's the tagline of ear lotion? Where do your ears get dry? We can, oh, the tagline is, it's on the bottle, it's printed, it says, we can hear your satisfaction. That is good. Bingo! Somebody hire me. <laughs> Today is a special day. We have Zandy Mowry on the show. Zandy is the guitar player for uh, one of our favorite bands and one of your favorite bands as well, The New Respects. Yes. The New Respects is a band out of Nashville comprised of uh, siblings and cousins. And it sounds like that. I mean, there is like an undeniable like chemistry and rhythm that happens in The New Respects that um, you you don't listen to the new respects sitting down, right? And you if you are yeah. sitting down, you start to stand up. Uh, one, because it's a call to attention, and two, it makes you want to dance. All right, well, today is going to be a beeping great show, and we're just going to have a beeping great time. But before we beep and get on with, <laughs> before we get on, we want to do band names. Uh, the, what? I feel like we have to sing it now every time. We got to do... Band names. Band names. Wow. from the future and the past are we doing that no we're not doing that today. okay we're doing what it's a future i don't idea. know what you're talking about no i just thought it was feel like since we were doing radio dj stuff that's good band names on 100.9 with colton phillip phillip band names oh, man yeah. if only you could do a robot voice that'd be perfect for it this is going real deep uh, band names. These are copyrighted by us and uh, trademarked by us because they're recorded here. So if you use any of these band names, we'll sue you. But if you want to use one, all you got to do is email DTO at walrusaudio.com. And I hope somebody emails you back. So I think we have the email, but nobody checks it. Yeah, I don't think anybody yeah, signed in yet. <laughs> oh, Austin, uh, oh, Austin yeah. is over there being like, I check it. It's have we received anything? It's tons. Yeah, we, wow, tons. <laughs> he, he, he didn't said shake tons. his head no. He, he said a beep and lot of emails. I mean, oh, he is having to just, he is having a time. He's working. He's scrolling. He's showing working us. weekends. <laughs> he's just out there working weekends, clearing out the inbox on 90.9. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is getting really bad. So what's your band name this week? My band name is Bleach Maggots. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Uh, and they, <laughs> they're a crust punk band. Uh, Listen, what is crust punk? Crust punk I'm thinking is of like scabs. grunge. It makes it's me like, think of scabs. <laughs> <laughs> it's crusty. I have like big scabs in my brain. <laughs> Not like in my brain, but like I'm imagining big scabs. Uh, uh, their album title is Death Pill. Death Pill. And they're That's from France. That's heavy. Yeah, it is. They're I mean, from they're, France? they're a crust punk band. I mean, they're from France. They're from France, yeah. That is such a French thing. It is, yeah. It makes oh. sense. And I know that because Jason here at Walrus Audio, we were just in France like a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, and that, like, what's the name of it? The? Fits. Bleach Maggot. Bleach, Bleach Maggot is such a French band. And <laughs> they're called Crust Punk? It's a crust punk, yeah. Yeah. I, it sounds like also like a... Like not new nine inch nails, but like classic, like early nine inch nails band. Also, it sounds like it, they would be like that because yeah. they don't sound like that. Or like like where there's like organic instruments happening, but yes. there's also like like keyboard like process sounds and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Like, like early Lincoln Park, where it's like oh, there's a lot of like uh, like you know 
programming happening, but uh-huh. then also there's a room mic on the drums, and that's why it sounds amazing. Is that real? Is that real? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, I just want to back up that this is not only a room mic in the mix. There's plenty of <laughs> I'm sure there's like a snare top so and bottom one room mic, mic and all this, you know, the traditional things. But but there's for sure a room mic in there on some of those tracks, and that's why it sounds amazing. Uh, so wait, they are out on tour with Knocked Loose and Spite. They're doing a U.S. tour. Philip, I don't even know who that is. Who knocked is that? Loose? Knocked Loose and Spite. You should you shouldn't look up Spite, but you should look up Knocked Loose. And that, you you will hate it, but actually, it'll make you want to punch through a wall. It's good. Is it good bank robbing music? It is. It is great bank robbing. I need some good yeah. bank robbing music. Uh, that's that's the genre that makes you want to like punch through a wall. Like when you get like a good bank robbing tune, it's like <laughs> oh, this song makes me want to just jump out of my skin. Uh, the the peak pinnacle of bank robbing song is Clubfoot by Kasabian. Kazabane, Kasabian. We fight about that all the time. I was about to say, I don't know the correct way to say it. Clubfoot and make you want to rob a bank. It's like, listen, I don't want to go to jail, but I want to put this in my AirPods when I'm robbing a bank. And hope everybody... It's just said robbing a bank so many times. I know. My band name today, and I've wanted to bring this out for a long time. It's been sitting in the notes, and I just don't know the right time to bring it out. But... um, and, and uh, full disclosure, this this band name came out of a conversation, um, and the band name is Mildly Christian Nurses. <laughs> and <laughs> Mildly Christian Nurses is a jam band. Uh, they're psychedelic, and their their debut album, their debut album is is called "An IV Full of My Mother's Tears." So they they disappoint. I guess. <laughs> well, and they're, well, no, they don't disappoint. <laughs> the, uh, I think it's, I don't really understand the meaning behind why they named it that, okay. but I know that it could go multiple directions. I think it's mostly positive. They're a pretty positive band. They're on tour with My Morning Jacket. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's not the genre I was thinking. Looks jam band, psychedelic, okay. kind of lo fi. You said that already. Kind of stuff. You? I didn't hear I that. I did. Part. Yeah. Okay. No, I did. Okay. So without. <laughs> Without further ado, it's been a really heavy band name session. Oh, We've gone from robbing banks to IVs full of our mom's tears. Um, but uh, with that is the perfect intro to bring in Zandy Mowry. So uh, Here we go. let's see what she's got to say about all this stuff. Hey, everybody. Welcome. We do have Zandy Mowry, the guitar player, one of the songwriters Backup and, vocals. Uh, the style of the new respects. <laughs> oh man, is that cool? Can I say that? Yeah, uh, I, I I concur. Yeah, <laughs> I concur. Hey, real quick, where did we meet? How did we? Oh, how did we meet? Yes. The story goes. So, when do we actually meet, or when did I start like stalking y'all? Because it's uh, two different stories. One. The this the oh. stock. Uh, no, we'll go. I feel like. It, you're just, you're, I, no, because it's a journey. We got to go on the whole journey. This is probably 2016, maybe. Cool. Or something like that. Maybe I, even earlier. I think it was 2015. I was 11, yeah, 15. Years, I was 11 yeah. years old in 2016. <laughs> All right, keep going. <laughs> and I, um, I want to say through maybe Colony House or something, Heart of Your Company, yeah, I was not that good at the time, but I was like, I'm just going to shoot my shot. I always am like, the worst thing people can say is no. So I emailed uh, the artist relations department, aka which Phillip, is Philip, and I was like, this is the this is what we do. This is our band, um, and Put he was pretty much like, song. here's a five percent discount. <laughs> I it was more than five no. percent. <laughs> Oh my no, gosh. It was, you sent the no. money. The what's the money song? Yeah, money off of our first EP now. Yeah. But it was oh, like yeah. a demo at the time. It was. A great I think demo. I sent money and rich. I remember. Okay, so uh, I'm buddies with in Nashville, uh, Andy Osenga, and yes. then he he was working with you guys, and then he he just felt the the urge to text me. And make me aware. He said, I've got this new band that I'm working with that you guys would really like. And so he just, yeah, he reached out uh, and 
and plug the new respects all on his own. Yeah. Sidebar, if you don't know who Andrew Osenga is, you need to go on Spotify and then scroll all the way down to Leonard, the Lonely Astronaut. And he wrote an entire album from the perspective of a lonely space trucker who has left Earth because he ruined his life. And uh, it is an amazing album of pain and redemption. Really good. All right. So that's how we met uh, yeah. through the Artist Relations Inbox. And then we met in person. And then... Yeah, we met in person when we were on tour in 2017 when we were on tour with Need to Breathe, and I think y'all were honestly trying to meet with them, but we kind of snuck our way in. Somehow, you saw that we were also opening for, like, we were opening yeah. for them. But then I think Philip reached out and was like, "Hey, yeah, we want to meet y'all. You know, it's been a long time coming. Let's take. I want to take you guys out to dinner." Your thinking is wrong. Okay, so we did, it that, was that specifically for y'all, yeah. And then we got pizza, yeah. right? I yeah. thought, oh, well, I don't know why I thought y'all were there for them. <clears throat> we because we, uh, we met up with them a bunch of times. So oh, we because you guys met before. Yeah. Uh, we okay, check, well, we've checked those boxes. <laughs> 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 On to the nearest bugs. Yeah, Next. but we got pizza. We got pizza. We got pedals, uh-huh. and then we just you guys could not get rid of us. Did you we say like, pills? Pedals. <laughs> guitar pedals pizza and pills that's what we do we got pizza we got pills i mean honestly i don't remember 98 9 so 2015 what is this 22 yes yeah, it's 2020 yeah it's 22 wow. and i was 11 years old that long like, yeah. now i'm in my 30s so Man. that's really interesting uh i remember getting pizza with you guys um and I remember you guys coming to the shop okay it's all coming back to me now and yeah. then somehow we've just seen each other for a couple times every when we're in Nashville and when we're out and around. I feel like we see each other like once a year. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely once a year, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, a, f- a sidebar, need to breathe. Like, have they, do they still need to breathe? Like, or have, they, have they caught their breath eventually? <laughs> I mean, that's like, it's such, it's an, a lifelong it is such an alarming thing to, to read. It's need, a lifelong yeah. I need to breathe. It's like, they oh, all man. have asthma. I mean, that so must be it. it that must be it. <laughs> Through the pain, we formed these songs. Um, okay, so Zanny, what I want? It's <laughs> going south. Somebody send this to Bear. Um, the uh, profile your band for me as as someone who pretend like I haven't heard of you guys okay. and I haven't heard your music. Um, sell me on the new respects. What is it? What does it sound like? What are the ingredients? guitar player my brother Darius drummer and then jasmine the lead singer and all born and raised in nashville we kind of like when we were in high school we were like we are definitely not going to start a band that was not the goal because everybody in nashville does that and it's kind of like when you're born here it nashville doesn't have the same like cool effect it just seems like oversaturated so it was like oh i'm not about to be in a band and then Jasmine and I started writing songs together and the rest is history, really. Yeah. Um, you made a band. Yeah. Oklahoma City and, is the yeah, same way. Band. Uh, instead of, except for starting bands, you work in the oil and gas industry. That is so. true. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Very similar. I want to work in the energy industry. I am not. Um, okay. So the first word that came out of your mouth when I said describe your band was the word pop. What is pop in your definition? What is pop? <sighs> It is whatever is popular at the time. So it's the reason that like Michael Jackson can be pop and Selena Gomez can be pop. Yeah. And Adele can be pop. Put some words to that. What's that it factor? What is that? What is the it factor of pop? What is it? Casting a wide net. So it's just a song that the world can get behind. A song. Pop is a song that the world can get behind. Yeah. Yeah. Is that on the Wikipedia page of pop? It should be. It yeah, was. I googled it before this interview to make me sound smarter. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna ask me what pop is. I'm so yeah, rest. what I'm sure they're gonna say is what is pop. <laughs> um, but it's just so vast. Like it's not really a genre as much as it is like a tag <gasps> that you get after something. You know. That's really good. Um, say that again. like rock and roll is like a clear genre. Like oh. there are guitars in rock and roll. Hip hop is like there is rap pop there's no like specific thing so country pop 
of like every yeah. punk pop alternative pop, pop punk <clears throat> right that's good so <laughs> it's kind of it 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 is what it is at the time and then you just kind of so for us the way we we kind of um grab inspiration from our favorite pop artist michael jackson is a good example yeah like if, we're not saying that we are going to recreate what he did we're saying that his version, his lane of pop is something we're inspired by. And so we can like apply it to how we inform what our lane of pop is. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love the idea that pop is a tag instead of a yeah. a genre, which I think you're right. I think it's why it's hard to define pop because so many things all the way from, from what you said, like from grunge to, to R and B have been, you know, categorized as pop. Um, right. What pushed you over the edge? Being from Nashville, what pushed you over the edge to start a band? You said you didn't want to do it, but what made you? Um, songwriting. It was something that was natural to me, yeah. but at the same time, like, very fascinating. So when Jasmine and I started writing together, it was a new form of, like, doing life together. Because yeah. I think when we wrote our first song, I was probably 14 or 15. Yeah, what was the song called? Um, while we're young, while while we're young, we were writing about um, like a love song, like about uh -huh. you know doing making mistakes, falling in love. Well, let's do it all while we're young, uh -huh. and we were both very single, had never been in relationships. <laughs> you know what That's I mean? So, so all of our inspiration was <laughs> was from Prince's Diaries, oh, and amazing. you know, oh man, did you record it? Girls, yeah. <laughs> Does it we suck? We did. It I don't. Great? I don't. I think my mom still has it. I don't have it. Oh my gosh! Yo, mom needs to come out of the archives. <laughs> and really, it was Jasmine's cousin who, like, we played the song for her, and she was like, "That's really good." Like, a lot of people try really hard to write songs like that. Y'all should do something with it. And we we're like, "Okay." It didn't really take that much convincing. Yeah, but it, we had so much fun doing it. Did your brother Darius play <laughs> drums at the time? Or did he have to learn drums? He, to be yeah, in the he's band? been playing drums his whole life. So, but he didn't have a drum set. So when we started the band, we were like convinced we were going to be like acoustic vibes. We were like, he'll never play a full kit. He's going to be a, on a home. Yeah. And then my sister Lexi, who was in the band at the time, like played keys. Yeah. Um, Coffee it was shop just band like a forever. whole mess of a thing. Uh huh. What? Uh, what? What was the? What were the artists that were inspiring the the acoustic? vision of the band it was like brooke fraser's um record flags uh-huh uh that was like ingrid michelson yeah colby calais okay very white artists yeah. <laughs> <to be> <laughs> that's great I, those are good albums though they but are yeah i like i really like where we're at today <laughs> with the new respects <laughs> yeah because instead of it, making, i mean hey it's a big rev uh, revolution from then to oh, I mean from geez. yesterday to today yeah I say the the Ingrid Michelson Colby Kelly it makes me want to sit and soak but New Respects yeah. makes me want to like dance and like put my fist through a wall <laughs> like in a good That's way exactly the you know it's like oh, I feel so powerful <laughs> this rhythm is so complex but so pop yeah. um so I think uh the, uh, speaking of rhythm that like that is you know there's such a there's such a cohesive creative rhythm to the band specifically um when i think of the new respects I, here's the deal a lot of bands are maybe driven by like the talent of the band and the the yeah the glory of the band is is driven maybe by one person mainly sometimes the chief songwriter uh principal yeah. front front person um but there are bands that collectively, uh, there's a lot of creativity, like probably yeah. shared equally between all of them. So I think of bands like uh, Kings of Leon. Yeah. Uh, and it, I'll throw, I'm going to throw Coldplay in here. Uh, I think right. that that's fair. Yeah. Um, because they collectively make a sound uh, together. And and I, pu I put New Respects in that category also. That's not like a singer-songwriter band. Um, mm -hmm. But is kind of like a like everybody's bringing something that they do to to make the sound. So, do you guys write as like first of all, tell me if I'm right, and then mm -hmm. do, how do you guys write as a band to kind of to make all that work? 
I think that um, it's evolved since we first started. So I think the bones of the mirror specs, the, the identity kind of, of our band was very much that it was very collective. Like we were always, if we wrote a song, all, we were all in the same room. We all had instruments out and tried to figure out what it was. And yeah. so like we had so many phases of who we thought we were. And really those phases were just like, who was the most popular band at the time and what were they doing? And we were kind of like, do our version of that. But when we finally stopped um, trying to mimic and really just evolve into what we wanted to do, that became the new respect sound. Uh -huh. So we kind of have a blueprint of that. And now we use that blueprint to write new songs. So it's less, um, I mean, also I was... 16 when we started the band oh, wow. and then i'm 27 now so like my life just time wise looks very different uh -huh. but because of the hours that we spent creating an identity as a band we now can be collective even though we're separate because we know where we're going back to yeah um so it may not look as uh as formal as us all meeting up in the same room now it looks like me coming up with the guitar part and intentionally like not programming drums to it, but just sing what I want to sing over it. I'll send it to Darius and then he'll put drums on it. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So that um, I'm not informing everything or he's not informing everything or Jasmine's not informing everything. So um, it's kind of like both ends. Some songs are written top to bottom by one person. And then some songs are written by all of us. It just kind of depends on the season. When the band started, when you were sixteen, uh, we're going for an yeah. acoustic vibe. Uh, what was the what was the song or the artist that kind of changed the direction of like, oh no no no, we're gonna do this? What happened there? Um, I really started playing electric guitar. I think that is yeah. really what widened the genre from like because I don't I rarely even travel with an acoustic guitar anymore. Yeah, unless we're like shooting videos or we're doing like something smaller but um at the time my electric was kind of like a feature into what we did and now it's switched like acoustic becomes more of the feature uh -huh. so when we figured out like we don't want to be uh we, we want to make people dance we kind of had yeah. to figure out like what that sounded like yes i don't know if there's a specific artist that we gravitated towards i grew up in a christian household and i grew up very sheltered. So we only were allowed to listen to like gospel music uh -huh. or Motown. So like Jackson five was always been like a big inspiration. Yeah. But obviously we play like heavier music than they do. Um, so I don't even, I don't even know. Let's say we started the band in 2016 and we started playing the music we play with. There is a um, producer here in town named Jeremy Latito who helped us mm -hmm. figure out, and like connect the dots yeah. of like what we were really trying to do. Okay. So what is, what besides, so we've talked a lot about songwriting. Um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people uh, are inspired to write by hearing other people's music, but what else uh, like inspires songs? Something that's not music, a medium or an experience. What else yeah. inspires those songs? I think just good storytelling. So like whether that's a movie or a book or yeah. even like a conversation with somebody um, at least for me, that always inspires, like, how can I make that story into a three and a half minute song? Um, so life also informs, like, we're all living a story, right? So yeah. you kind of pick apart and frame different parts of your own story that you end up writing a song about, or at least I do. Um, so it can be like kind of fiction or nonfiction, but I also, in whatever way they come, I kind of try to lean in and pay attention to them to see if I can turn them into something that everybody can sing, you know, once it's in a specific form. Yeah. Do you have a good example of that? Um, okay. So life wise, uh, marriage, so many stories in marriage. I've been married for two years now. And so like, it's even different coming from thanks being single. So we were, we started doing this professionally when I was 19. Yeah. So, I've had years and years of doing this without a husband and now seeing how it, how being married um, informs how I write, how I play, how I tour, you know what I mean? Like it, it all plays a part. And so um, there's a song called you matter. It's not out yet, but 
um, that was written kind of in that context. Yeah. But it is recorded and it is coming out. I just don't know when. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. No, that, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's kind of a version of like, okay, how do I communicate this to somebody? And songwriting has just been a very well-worn in tool in my tool belt. So it's kind of easy for me to go that route, even in a new scenario, which is nice. That makes sense. Where'd you meet your husband? Originally Instagram. Love so, it. yeah, 21st century, you know, early Were you both commenting or something on each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was actually the love of guitar pedals that brought us together. He like, and he was cute. So I'll shoot him my shot, but I'm a DLA. He's good looking. But uh, He's, we were just talking about that before something. the podcast. We're like, are we going to talk about how good looking he is? <laughs> good looking guy. He was playing something and I asked him like, what was in his guitar chain? And I knew it was going to be like a unique enough question to grab his attention because it's not really like something girls typically like lead off with. Sure. Yeah. Oh. But then we started talking music and You're then so smart. that led to him coming to the studio when we were making our album. Then we started going on dates and then we were married like two years after that. Oh, that's so good. Where was that? Was that Nashville or Los Angeles? That was in LA. He lived in LA at the time. So We've talked and we're kind of just friends for probably a year and a half, two years before we actually met. Yeah. Then when we actually met, it's 2018. I was in LA recording where he lived at the time. Yeah. Um, he came to the studio and then we got dinner after that session. Then he came back to the studio the next day. We went out again the next night. And then we just like literally never stopped talking. So then he moved to Nashville um, January of 2020. Yeah. He proposed in July. And we were married in September. Wow. Oh, yeah. So uh, are you LA or Nashville right now? Nashville. Great. Which one do you prefer? Nashville. LA's pace moves too. Like, it's too crazy for me. Yeah. What What about? I know LA? people who love it. And I'm just like, I just don't. I mean, like, we actually just bought our first home and it's on like almost two acres of land. You just oh, wouldn't yeah. find that in LA. Yeah. No, dude. That's not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would be I would be a Nashville person as well. I don't I get lost in Los Angeles, and <laughs> yeah. um, Los Angeles. Like, <laughs> and he's he's loved it now. Now he's grown to love the charm of it. When he first got here, it, he actually ran into COVID, so it was like he got here in January. By March, the world was shutting down, uh -huh. so he didn't really get to see a lot of it. But now when he goes back to L.A., he's like, OK, I get the differences and I understand why people want to like actually settle down in Nashville versus yeah. like you hustle in L.A. and then you like live in Nashville. So, yeah, I love that. You hustle in L.A. and you live in Nashville. Is that yeah. going to be the title of your book? Yes, um, it's coming out in March of 2020,000. 2020,000. 2020,000. That is a what is that? big year <laughs> yeah year. i mean huge i think that is the title of the podcast yeah do you guys feel like um your art is ever misunderstood or misinterpreted in some way i know a lot of people do um honestly when we first started touring we toured pretty heavily in christian spaces and that was probably the most misunderstood we felt uh -huh. um there's this disconnect in I mean, not to get too deep, but there is a disconnect okay. in Christian culture that deems what is good and what is not, what is holy and what is not. And we weren't deemed holy, <laughs> you know, like we were deemed on kind of like the fringe side yeah. of like, um, most, most Christian music is mostly white men and yeah. there's women in there too. But so we're all, we're an all black band. So yeah. that was already kind of like different. And then we're playing like electric guitars and loud music so then that's already different and it wasn't like overt and yeah. like we're not a worship band yeah so that was different you're so not, we realized you're not shooting pretty for quickly, caleb top 40 <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah we realized pretty quickly like we had to create um an identity without trying to find value in like people's opinions of us yeah mm -hmm. um and we thought we, we stopped playing Christian events for a season because we were just like, it's just a little too complicated. And now kind of in the same way that I was talking about how we became like, um, how we found our sound and like getting the identity first. And now we're able to kind of apply it wherever. Yeah. That's how we had to do where we were as artists and as people, 
where we had to find our footing first. We're like, what are we trying to do? What do we believe? It, are we doing something wrong? And then once we found out, like, okay, we're, we're Christians. We just don't look and sound like this. Mm. We're able to go back into those same or similar places and be us no matter what. And it not affect us the way that it did yeah. when we first started out. Put that bookmark that time period about what album was that right before or around? That was so we got signed really fast. We, um, I was, we had like dropped out of college because so Lexi and I, like I said, my sister who's in the band, we're, the, we're twins, so we were the same age, and then Darius and Jazz were the same age, and we're only a year apart. So I was 19, or Lexi and I were 19, Darius and Jazz were 20. This is about 2016, 2017. Yep. Um, and then we started touring. We, oh, that's how it goes. So we started practicing. Andrew Osenga came to one of our shows. Yep. Uh, called us in a meeting in, de- in December. He was working with Capitol Records at the time and we were signed by February. So then, wow. um, we went on our first tour, which was opening for Switchfoot and Lecrae. Um, probably the following year yeah i want to say and then um so we had to learn pretty quickly like in that time frame like what was what and then it, everything happened so fast so we we had like two weeks to record music because we didn't have anything out okay but, but we had now we had a tour <laughs> so now we had to like get music out to sell like yeah. it, it all happened so fast oh my goodness that yeah. sounds like a that sounds like an awesome nightmare oh yeah and is that whenever we like, you recorded oh my gosh. Oh. we were like the record industry is so easy oh my gosh <laughs> this is <laughs> a piece of cake was that whenever you recorded about. with jeremy latito yeah okay what a great idea yeah that's amazing yeah um what so touring pretty heavily um do you, which part of the of the process do you like do you like the songwriting going into the studio or do mm-hmm. you like touring or do you like performing live? Like which, which part do you feel like this my, is the part I was born to do? My favorite part is the live show. It's, okay. it's like the reason you make music is to connect with people. And so it's a, you get like an instant perspective of the music doing that, you know? And so it's not with, with albums and with songwriting, there's a delayed effect. Like yeah. you, you write the song and you're like, okay, this is cool. Then you go in. And you make the song with the band, you're like, okay, this is cool. And then you record the song, you're like, okay, this is cool. But then you release the song and it's still this like waiting, like, what do people think? You yeah. know, that doesn't happen on stage. You walk out, they either, they either love it or hate it. You know, you either can win them over or you can't. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I'm a pretty, um, like, I like to achieve. I like to have goals and reach them. And so being able to, especially on a tour, like do something, watch it work or do something and not watch it work and then change it so that tomorrow you have another chance of doing it and seeing like how, how much better you can be. Like, I love that. Yeah. And then also like music is just a vehicle to people. Like the, the amount of time that we spend on stage is like 5% of touring. Like, especially if you're opening, you have like a 20 or 30 minute set. Mm-hmm. The rest of the time, you're either like with your bandmates or with crew. You know, like it's just not the stage is such a small part of yeah. your day. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've learned to love like the community aspect of touring, and then also like learning to um, love meeting like the fans and hearing their stories and how the songs affected their world. So, without the people, it wouldn't really matter as much. I would always write, but but like I was saying about storytelling, like stories are good because you share them Mm -hmm. and um, touring is good because it's a shared experience between artists and audience. Um, And I wouldn't trade that for anything. Something happens um, between when you're writing music and then you record the songs and then they're all mastered and then they get released and then people start listening to them and they start connecting with them and then you start playing live shows with these songs that have been in the closet for Mm -hmm. you know sometimes over a year yeah has has a song or a few songs ever like changed meanings from what you intended it for versus how how everybody is perceiving it like maybe in a good way or maybe in a, a different way um there's a song called sail that i wrote 
um, years ago. And it's on our, we released an acoustic EP like after COVID. Yeah. Um, and that song is essentially about like going, going to the somewhere roots. you've never. The acoustic you roots. Going back to the roots, the acoustic <laughs> roots of the band. Yeah, exactly. It's great. Yeah. Uh, that song is essentially about going somewhere you've never been before. Yeah. And so because the story it was specific to the time, I was writing about being signed and like not really knowing what was next. Um, but because the story's so broad, so many people have applied their own stories into wherever they're going. Um, and then also it's even evolved for us. Like we at one time was talking about starting a band and then it became talking about being signed. And then it became about being touring for the first time. And then it became about when like my sister left the band after she started having kids, mm -hmm. like, so like the story just kind of keeps taking wow. on new meaning for the audience, but also for us. And so um, I think that is, again, the beauty of storytelling you yeah. kind of, after a while, like your pen may be put down, but the story keeps going. Um, and so you get to experience the song from the audience perspective um, because life will inform it in ways you never really could have imagined. So things, things happen pretty fast. And I, and I, I want to, uh, for you guys, but I, I want to say that with the caveat of um, that there wasn't any like luck involved. I mean, there's obviously like lots of hard work, lots of talent, lots of uh, yeah. like 10,000 hours put in. So, but when things move fast, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to say no to some things. And yeah. sometimes you say yes to things you wish you didn't say yes to. So if you had to do it all over again, uh, mm -hmm. what would you do the same and what would you do different? And you're talking at people that might be at that spot. Um, people pleasing is a dangerous drug. Mm -hmm. It, it can get you high, you know, really fast, but then you always crash because you need people in order to fuel that in you. And so I think what I would do differently is find a better source from the beginning. Yeah. Um, and in that source, you find like a lot of freedom in order to make decisions that make sense for the moment. I thankfully don't have a ton of moments and I'm like, I really regret that. I shouldn't have done that. But at the same time, I had a benefit of being surrounded by people. I wasn't like a solo artist. So our think tank moments wasn't just me looking at a wall. You know, it was everybody kind of looking at both sides of the coin and giving their own opinions. Yeah. So I feel like um, you have more time than you think you do. And you can't let fear drive the ship because it just is not a good leader what should drive um, the ship i think hope and identity so like knowing who you are enough to inform like what you do and don't like it's kind of like going on a blind date yeah and the person who's just like that was awesome like i really love that person like after the first date and it's like that person's so vastly different than any of the thing you've ever said you've liked. In some ways that can be cool, but in other ways, if you're just interested in somebody, somebody because they're interested in you, um, you'll end up with somebody you actually are not compatible with. Uh -huh. And I think it's the same way with opportunity. Like there's going to be a lot of people who either are very interested in you. And so you're into that or are not interested in you. So now you're down on yourself, but if you know who you are and you let identity drive, those things don't shape who you are as much as they inform where you're at. I'd struggle to say when people are like, you know, this thing made me who I am. I go back and forth. I don't know if I a hundred percent agree with the thought process. So I struggle to say like, I'm happy we made the mistakes, but I am happy with like what we learned from them. Yeah. Um, and I don't, there's just like, I should say like our, our journey started so fast and then it kind of came to a screeching halt, like because of the world, like it, in 2020, it yeah. flipped upside down and we had to relearn. See, okay. That is something we got signed so young. We never did what a lot of bands do who like, and this sounds like I'm bragging. I'm not, we didn't have the years of like grinding and figuring out who we were. Like it all happened so fast. I was right out of high school. Yeah. or like a year out of high school when we got signed and now having we're no longer signed and having to learn like the indie way yeah. is hard like it's like oh this isn't 
I, I've never had to do this before. I'm not a music attorney. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then you're not only learning like the in the artist way, but the people who are giving you advice didn't do it in 2022. So they're like, oh, just get on the road. Or like, oh, if you sell this amount of CDs. And it's like, one, we stream now. It's about like streaming is a thing. Like you're not really selling records. And then two, people are less interested in live shows because of, I don't really know, like ticket sales are just weird right now. The market's weird. Like, so it's like the things that worked yesterday don't always work today. So you kind of have to figure out a new way in a new world all at the same time. Yeah. And then you add the season of life that we're in where um, all the band members are in the band and they have other things that they're doing yeah. um, for like career moves. So not like uh, part time work, but it's like, oh, I also wanted to expand and do this, you know, with yeah. my life. I also want to expand and do this. So you're just juggling like a season that we've never encountered before with no history of like doing it ourselves. Right. So if I could change something. I would ask more questions from the people who like knew what they were doing when we were signed yeah. versus just being like, cool, they got it. You know? Yeah. Um, who, so yeah, well, we've talked about it on the podcast a little bit, but like the blue collar musician where who is, mm-hmm. is out, mm-hmm. you know, maybe the label's not doing all the work for you. You're doing a substantial part of the heavy lifting. Um, yeah. Who, who is somebody that you look up to maybe even in Nashville that, that does that really well that you're learning from? Um, Drew and Ellie Holcomb do it really well. Yeah. Um, they, Drew's just really smart. Like he, he's a good businessman, which makes him a good artist. Yeah. Like, I think there's a disconnect between like the artist who just wants to play music. And then if you care anything about music business, people are like, Oh, you're more of a manager. And it's really like, if you have the, ability to do think in both ways at the same time like you can really capitalize on a lot of opportunity that a lot of people would typically miss yeah mm-hmm. randomly I t- i'm thinking of him because i grew up with him but toby matt he's yeah. br- he's a brilliant businessman yeah and his mind has kept him selling out arenas for like 20 plus years yeah yeah and that's just like unheard of um in a, in a market that changes so fast, yeah. like the fact that he's still making music um, that people are connecting to and that he can sell, like, it's just like, it's crazy. You, yeah. the, the work you have to do to, to keep up with everything and make music and tour and run a label. Yeah. yeah and run a label. Yeah. yeah. So it's people who think outside of the box, but also people who like kind of create their own box because there is a beauty and boundaries that may look like limitations to other people, yeah. but it's just going like, this is where I work best and this is how I do this. And if I can do this well, then we can get anywhere. Yeah. But I think I come from the generation of like, I can do it all. You know what I mean? Like we sure. we're very into um, freedom, which kind of is used as a way of not being responsible uh-huh. and not learning a craft properly, you know? Yeah. Um, and like, Freedom no, can be a prison sometimes. Be. Oh, for sure. Um, especially when you have no goal, you're just like right. free for the sake of being free. Um, and then you look at anything that holds you accountable as chains when really it's an opportunity to grow and learn in something. Yeah. So there, there is, um, there's a, there's a lot of people probably I can name, in Nashville that I was fortunate enough to grow up with, but those are probably the two that come to mind. What's the best Christmas movie? It's hard. I don't, I never grew up like watching like white Christmas or things like that. And I'm sure those are like great classics. I think the best Christmas series movie, you know, movies is, is the Santa Claus uh, franchise with Tim Allen. Pull out Tim Allen. Okay. This is awesome. Dude, the Santa Claus. You know what I mean? It's just like Uh such a great great story. They're yeah. really great. And here's what I like is that you caught out the franchise. You're like, franchise. I'm not limiting you know myself I mean? to Santa Claus one. <laughs> I'm going full franchise on this. And then the Santa Claus. Oh, oh that's great. It's almost what, time to start Santa Claus. What is the best one though? The best the, the Christmas best. story? Like is that No, the best no. I mean the best Christmas movie is It's a Wonderful Life. Okay. See, I knew you were going that's like a classic. 
I I still don't I don't know if it's the best. The best is Elf. This fact is Elf fine. is up there for sure. It's the best. Yeah, I'd say Elf is my favorite. Elf though. is an original story. Yeah. You know, yeah. like we have um new characters. Not everybody yeah. everybody writes about Santa. We've been there, done that. Right. Elf? A big elf? A big a That's really, innovative. A really big Will Ferrell y <laughs> elf. Um Exactly. The, uh and then uh but I I think right behind it's a wonderful life is Christmas vacation. So Whoa. Ooh, that big is line. really good. It's it's an amazing so movie. Yeah. It really is. It's there's no wasted space. Uh, I can't wait till my kids are old enough to to watch it. And what age is that? Oh, uh, it's a lot earlier for me than it is for my wife. But you know, <laughs> yeah. we'll you're see. like it was last year for me. But uh huh, yeah. Um, okay, last question uh, before we head out today. What's what's a question that I didn't ask that you wish I would have asked today? I mean, you can you can keep this or you can cut this depending on. But what I will say about your company is that um, from the beginning or when we met to now, yeah, you guys have been the I shouldn't say the one company, but one of the top companies who's been so relational, yeah, that it's made me feel like I'm Mick Jagger. You know what I mean? Like I feel like oh man, they really care about me. Yeah as a person and that's rare in a company, especially in a company doing as well as you guys are. Yeah. And I remember getting a phone call from you when 2020 and all the black lives matter things are happening. And mm-hmm. you were like, what do I do as, what do we do as a company? Right. And I was like, you probably need to hire people of color. Like it's not necessarily yeah. about, you know, hard work. It is, but the application probably looks like that. And totally. I remember coming back to Walrus sometime after that just like to hang out and i saw it and i was like oh man they like yeah they care for real and i think so whenever you're asking me to do things it's just so easy to say yes because you're genuinely such great people yeah so like what we thought was just like a random like me being like a random fan of like a cool looking pedal has actually become like one of the reasons that i enjoy doing what i do in life yeah wow so that Thanks, was really, that was really great. yeah, that was a really special day too. Um, you know, as a as someone, you know, leading a business and and someone born, I was born white. Um, oh, fun fact, <laughs> born white. <laughs> yeah, and, and then you know when you're watching through the screen of your phone, like the world kind of falling apart, and really, yeah. you're, you're what you're watching is is people grieving, and then yeah. people grieve, uh, people grieve one in private, but then banners start to rise up that people can grieve behind. Um, yeah. And then I think in that moment, you know, the world starts to do this and people start to go to their separate corners, um, you know, very passionately. I'm going over here. Well, I'm going over here and I'm never going over there. And I hate that. Um, and so uh, I think what that phone call did for me that day was, was like, hey, I need you to just talk to me through one, your perspective of of life and then uh as a business leader and someone who you know people listen to like on social media the company um yeah what's helpful to hear from us you know uh yeah and, and so thank you for being someone of great character that that we can bounce ideas off of so of course i'm just yeah. 27 and trying to make sense of life so <laughs> <laughs> yeah well let us know when you've figured it all out. That's really great. Yeah, I'll probably hit you up tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna it's, it's going to be in 50 years. That's yeah. what's going to the world's going <laughs> to yeah. yeah. We'll read about it in your book, Pop yeah. is a Tag. <laughs> exactly. That's be on the lookout. Um, Amazon and uh, Borders is where you can Dude. get it. Borders. <laughs> Borders oh, is man. around in 50 years. I love uh, that is, that's yeah, good uh, news for it, them. It's coming back. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be cool. And they're like, thank God. Um, okay. So last thing you, you're going to send people somewhere after this podcast is over where you're going to send them to consume and, and digest all of your content and your music. Where are you sending Disney them? world? Okay. Yeah. That's the first send we've gotten to Disney world. <laughs> so awesome. I That's will, where I want to send you. Yeah. I will also and throw then in. Beg Mickey to, um, ask, well, I guess you ask Mickey. Yeah. Cause I'm paying for your ticket okay. to be like, oh, bring yeah. the new respects, you know, as the new, Franchise. Yeah. Uh, so then we'll have our own music videos, movies, TV shows, 
It'll be like the Spider Verse, but oh man, bands. we've had a lot of names dropped today, and I've I've kind of been impressed um, through most of them. But name dropping Mickey is probably uh, <laughs> yeah. honestly, it's a I do little know presumptuous. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> Like, oh, you dropped the name there. Are you sure you want to keep that in the podcast? <laughs> Golly. And by the way, I know Mickey. Um, okay, fantastic. I'll also throw in, go to Spotify or Apple Music, type in yeah. newrespects.com. New respects, just Google yeah. it wherever you or go. Napster we'll and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right. Napster hey, in my MySpace. Yeah, thanks for being on the show today. Thankful for you. Yep, thanks for having um, me. You're wonderful and your art is wonderful and your family's wonderful and it's just nice to be around wonderful because it transcends onto me and Philip mm-hmm. and we definitely need that. Uh, so thank you so much for today. I appreciate thank you. you. Thank you. See ya. See ya. See ya.